أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا محمد عبد الله ورسوله اللهم افتع علينا فتوح العارفين ووفقنا توفيق الصالحين وانفعنا اللهم بالقرآن والذكر الحكيم اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا من فضلك علما وتعليما يقربنا منك برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم لا سهل إلا ما جعلته سهلا وأنت يا حي يا قيوم تجعل الحزن إذا شئت سهلا سهلا ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم وصلى الله تعالى على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين آمين آمين أما بعد My dear and most respected brothers and sisters and friends I greet you all with the greetings of Islam Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu May the peace and blessings of God Almighty be with each and every one of you. And welcome once again to this special program coming to you from the Islamic Forum of Canada, where we share with you this message of mercy from God Almighty to all of His creation. Today, it's a special program indeed. It is our first program for the new year. 2016, uh, the first program, and so I want to take this opportunity to convey to you special greetings, happy New Year greetings to each and every one of you and to all Canadians and to everyone looking at this program on behalf of myself and my family and everyone at the Islamic Forum of Canada. So happy, happy New Year to each and every one of you. And I want to start off our program today with a special prayer to recite the Fatiha, the special dua, supplication prayer to God Almighty. Uh, for his blessings to all of us in this new year. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless this new year for us, bless us in this new year, help us to do good deeds in this new year. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to be uh, even better than we were as believers than the past year in this new year. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala solve all our problems take care of all our needs. Those of, uh, those of you who are ill, I make this special prayer that God Almighty would grant you shifa, grant you a speedy and full recovery from your illness. If any one of you are having any personal problems and personal difficulties, uh, I make this prayer that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala remove your problems and difficulties and take take care of all your needs. If anyone is in need of a job, we, I make this prayer that God Almighty in this new year grant you a job even better than your, your, you would expect beyond your imagination. If anyone has any financial difficulty, I make this special prayer of the Fatiha now that God Almighty would remove all your financial difficulties and whatever problems you have, this special prayer for each and every one of you now. And I kind of request you to raise your hands and join me in reciting Surah Al-Fatiha with that niyyah that they just mentioned, a special prayer for each and every one of you. Rabbana taqabbal minna, Rabbana bisiril fatiha. 
بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين 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 May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept it from us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us in this new year. And let this year be better than all our previous years. Ameen. Uh, I also want to share with you today some reflections on some lines of poetry that we uh, play, we recite in this program every week. At the end of our program, we conclude the program with lines of poetry in, in praise of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And so today, I want to share some reflections on, on that with you. So uh, to, to help us to understand something about the, the life, about the maqam, the spiritual station of the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings of God Almighty be upon him. Uh, the, 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 the lines that we recite at the end of our program every week, بَلَغَ الْعُلَى بِكَمَالِهِ كَشَفَ الدُّجَى بِجَمَالِهِ حَسُنَتْ جَمِيعُ خِصَالِهِ صَلُّوا عَلَيْهِ وَآلِهِ بَلَغَ الْعُلَى بِكَمَالِهِ The Prophet Muhammad attained and he reached the highest position by means of his perfection. بَلَغَ الْعُلَى بِكَمَالِهِ So the Prophet ﷺ is described in this line as uh, having the quality and the attributes of Kamal. That he is al insan al kamil, the, the, the perfect uh, human being. Uh, and, and so God Almighty created him in this way. Uh, and, and you would find that people uh, do good based on uh, this goodness that is within us. And, and, and so in our program every week, we, we try to point you in that direction that you can... Uh, allow this goodness to be nourished and cultivated inside of you. Because once you have this goodness inside of you, you will manifest good deeds uh, in what you do in your life. And the best example of this is the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because he was this perfect person and he attained the, the highest position, the highest maqam uh, of all the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because of his perfection. بَلَغَ الْعُلَى بِكَمَالِهِ And then it continues, كَشَفَ الدُّجَى بِجَمَالِهِ He eliminated utter darkness by his beauty. His beauty was such that it brought illumination and nur and light to whatever darkness was there. And so the Sahabas, the companions would say that, and especially those who were from Medina, the Ansars, uh, they would say that when the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, left Mecca and he went, went to Medina for the Hijra, Medina became illuminated, became bright with the nur of the Prophet وسلم. This is what he would do physically, spiritually, and otherwise. They saw the, the, the city become brighter because of the presence of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Many examples of them, uh, while they're in Medina, they would be in a room that was dark and the Prophet alayhi wasallam would come to visit them and the room would, would seem illuminated with the nur of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And inshallah, we'll share some more reflections with you on this beautiful life of the most beautiful creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Prophet Muhammad. صلى الله عليه وسلم. At the Islamic Forum School, we teach Islamic sciences, Arabic language, and Tajweed training. Classes are available for all age groups. It was narrated that Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم said, A faithful person cannot have enough of teachings that lead to piety, guidance, until it leads him to paradise. It was also narrated,
scholars are the inheritors of the sciences of the prophets of Allah. It was also narrated, words of wisdom are the beloved of the faithful. was narrated that Rasulullah was asked why he fasts Mondays. He said, it was the day I was born. As was narrated in Hadith Qudsi, those whom are engaged in my mentioning, I am with them as if I was their companion. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, Those who mention Allah profusely are given by Allah forgiveness and great reward. Bismillahi Rahman Rahim and Mawlid the Rasul Mubarak, special greetings on the occasion of the commemoration of the birth of the Prophet in this month of Rabi'il Awwal and also today the first program for the new year 2016. So happy new year greetings to each and every one of you. Remember our uh, education program, the Islamic school program continues at Islamic Forum. Please register your children and tell others about the program. The nightly Mawlids for Rabi'il Awwal continue and then tonight the special Saturday Maulid. I want to take this opportunity to uh, express thanks and gratitude to all those who came out who attended the special Grand Maulid we had on Thursday of this week, the 31st of December, to welcome the new year. It was amazing that at 12 midnight uh, we, we were there to uh, recite dhikr and dua and make special prayers for the new year and praise Allah to tahajjud and so on, a wonderful way to ring in the new year and a unique way indeed uh, to turn to God Almighty and to uh, engage in prayers and recitation of Quran. So thanks to all those who came out and those who supported the program, the wonderful uh, IFC family, brothers and sisters who uh, worked so hard for the, for the success of that program. Uh, last week we were in the United Kingdom in Birmingham for the amazing one million salawat event. We gathered together uh, a large number of brothers and sisters to recite Salawat and Durud Sharif on the Prophet وسلم, one million times and we were able to complete that. And then there were several million pledges that were made from uh, brothers and sisters in other cities, in other countries, many countries throughout the world that participated on, on, in that program. There was live streaming uh, from the Islamic Forum as well. Uh, next week, this coming weekend, uh, we'll be in Los Angeles in California for to be the guest speaker. I'll be the guest speaker at the annual Maulid event there for the Muslim community in LA. Uh, we look forward for that. We pray Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to benefit as many people as possible. There is also uh, an important program that is coming up at Islamic Forum. It is uh, uh, the SKS, the Sacred Knowledge Seminar, at this time of the year, every year we have this special program. It will be Sunday, February the 7th, the first Sunday of February. And uh, the, the theme of this Sacred Knowledge Seminar is called Traveler's Light. Agenda to change your condition. So an amazing program all day from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Please register now. You can go to the Islamic Forum website to register uh, for this special program, inshallah. We also want to thank all those who visited uh, our booth at the RIS convention in the bazaar. The Islam Forum had a booth there, uh, and the convention was a wonderful success. We we thank Sidi Khalid Patel and the other organizers for the hard work they do. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Bless them. Remember our project for the Syrian refugees. Uh, we like you to support that. And now I want to share with you some more moments, wonderful moments from the uh, welcoming MPs event we had at the Islamic Forum. Inshallah, some of the reflections I shared. And then today also we will share with you the speech from 
uh, a wonderful uh, new member of parliament, the first Somali Canadian who was elected uh, to the, the member of parliament, uh, as a member of parliament, uh, Brother Ahmed Hussein. Uh, a lawyer, a very intelligent person, and uh, we feel someone who can make a significant contribution to the uh, this government of Canada and to the work, the wonderful work of our Prime Minister, the Right Honourable Justin Trudeau. So please enjoy these segments from that amazing program. Mm -hmm. But it is also important on this day of celebration of this great victory that we recognize the challenges or some of the challenges we are faced with. I mentioned earlier that we had to bring forward uh, this meeting, this event today because of what happened in Paris and elsewhere. Uh, and it seemed as if it's uh, been spiraling almost out of control. There was Paris and Nigeria and Kenya and then yesterday Mali, the hotel uh, in Mali and so on. The terrorist actions of people who claim to be Muslims. I mentioned in my sermon yesterday, and I want to reiterate it uh, today, that we do not consider these terrorists to be Muslims. Their actions are not from the religion of Islam. And First of all, as Muslims, we need to speak up and speak loudly about this, that they do not represent us. And this is not the Islam of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. His religion was a religion of peace and love. And he is perhaps the greatest lover of humanity. And because of his love for humanity, he was able to spread peace among people. And this is the Islam we are practicing, or we strive to practice. Because the greatest exemplar and the greatest symbol of Islam is the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. No one can be a better Muslim than him. And so terrorists that commit actions in the name of Islam cannot be given that legitimacy. They want to claim that legitimacy, that Islam supports them. But we are here today to rebut that and to say no they do not represent us they do not represent Islam in addition to that we must also recognize that there are some people that use incidents such as what took place in Paris and elsewhere as a reason to spread hatred about Muslims. This Islamophobia is real. It is not the figment of our imagination. 
And unfortunately, even here in Canada, it has reached us. Last Friday, it was Paris. The terrorist attacks there. Last Saturday night, in Peterborough, there was a mosque that was firebombed. Fortunately, no one was in the masjid, in the mosque. No one was hurt. But it was the act of arson, arsonist. There were several incidents in Toronto on the subway and elsewhere of Muslim women in hijab who were, in some cases, verbally abused, in other cases, physically abused because of the effect, the consequences of what has been said about the terrorist act activities or actions in Paris. Uh, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Um, thank you very much uh, for being, uh, for inviting me to join you on this uh, occasion. Uh, I want to invite, uh, to thank the Islamic Forum of Canada for organizing this uh, event and putting together uh, this event. I will be very brief because I, I came from another event and I was uh, told uh, that I could still make it. So I'm happy to be here. Uh, I was going to only uh, relate one thing that I uh, took part in two days ago, which I think uh, encapsulates what I'm trying to, uh, the message that I bring to you today. So on Friday, I took part in um, a number of events in Peterborough. Uh, the local member was in Ottawa, so I was told to go and be the federal representative as the community was trying to um, deal with the aftermath of the uh, mosque that was burnt in Peterborough on November the 14th. Uh, Honorable, uh, the Honorable Mariam Monsaf, who's the MP for uh, Peterborough and also the Minister of Democratic Institutions was able to join us at the third event, but there was three, uh, there was two events prior to that where I represented uh, the Government of Canada. Uh, and the, the first was a meeting with the police chief. After that, we went to meet, uh, we, we had a, a Friday service in Peterborough. And because the Muslim community uh, couldn't use the mosque because the mosque was burnt, uh, the United Church uh, in Peterborough uh, graciously offered its space for the Muslim community to have its uh, Friday service. And, and in addition to that, uh, so for the, for the Friday services, the United Church space was being used by the Peterborough Muslim community. But on the weekday services for Asir, Maghrib, and, uh, and uh, Dur, and, and Fajr, and Isha, uh, the local Jewish synagogue offered its uh, space to, to the Muslim community. And if that doesn't give you an idea of what Canada is about, I don't think anything will. I think that's what our society uh, does in times when we're tested with an event uh, such as the burning of a mosque. And in addition to that, during the Friday service at the United, uh, the Friday Jum'a ah at the United Church, uh, when we looked back beyond the worshippers, there were groups of students from Trent University, which is the local university. Uh, there were groups of students at the back, young people, who had very large banners. And they held those banners before, during, and after the service. And the banners read, we stand here in solidarity with you. Um, and I thought that was very special as well. Uh, uh, my remarks then and now uh, is that we as a society uh, have these basic uh, standards such as making sure that places of worship are protected, that people are free to uh, practice their religion in this country. And incidents such as the burning of a mosque uh, are a test to us as a society on our, on our commitment to those values. And when I saw 
the United Church offering space, when I saw the uh, local Jewish uh, synagogue offering space to, for weekly prayers for the Muslim community, and when I saw young people from Trent and others standing on the side with solidarity signs, I thought that uh, the Canadian society together met and overcame that test. The commitment that they showed is an answer to the hatred that was behind the burning of the mosque. So, so the message I have today is that we're, we're very fortunate to live in this country, a country that celebrates pluralism, that doesn't find diversity to be a problem, but in fact a strength. And I'm very happy to be here amongst you as we move forward together. I'm, part, I'm very proud to, be, to have been part of a team with my colleagues that uh, ran a really, really positive campaign. A campaign that fought really hard against attempts to divide Canadians from each other. Uh, a campaign that, and a leader who emphasized bringing people together. And you can see in, in a very short time, in, since we've been elected, uh, Canada's uh, reputation in the world is slowly coming back. Our leader is, is, is bringing people together abroad. He has taken strong positions when things like the Peterborough Mosque situation has happened or other hateful incidents. And you know, for those who say that leadership doesn't matter, leadership matters. Because when you have the prime minister of this country taking a clear stand against hatred, against bigotry, against uh, uh, harassment of, of people of faith, then that sends a signal to the rest of society that we as Canadians will not stand for this and that we will continue to work hard to maintain our pluralism and our strength, which, is, which comes from our diversity. And I think the Muslim community plays a big role in that. Thank you very much. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim and Mawlid Rasul Mubarak to each and every one of you and Happy New Year to each and every one of you. I want to thank uh, the Honorable Ahmed Hussein uh, for his wonderful words that he spoke at the Islamic Forum in this recent event we had to welcome the newly elected members of Parliament. He is the first Canadian Somali elected to uh, Parliament in Canada. We wish him well. May God Almighty bless him and guide him to do what is good for all Canadians. As we conclude our program today, uh, I want to remind you of the special Sacred Knowledge Seminar we are having on the first Sunday of February, 7th of February, at Islamic Forum All Day Intensive Seminar from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. The theme is called Traveler's Light, Agenda to Change Your Condition. Please uh, register for that program. Remember your generous donations to Islamic Forum. Today is a wonderful day in this new year. Make a generous donation to Islamic Forum. We make a special Special appeal to you. Until we meet again, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.